It's been new, uh, putting the pieces together. Uh, I think everybody, for the most part, likes what we're doing. Uh, certain game plans and how we're going about defenses and offense and stuff. So it's continuously building. What's been the uh, biggest challenge for you in terms of getting to know Darko's new systems? Uh, we didn't really say there's really too many challenges. It's pretty easy. It's not too hard or too complex. You know, just swing the ball, cut. So it's not, I wouldn't really say it's challenging. How is it different? Then what? Uh, I would say first we've been moving it a little bit more. Uh, it's going about side to side. Uh, I would say not as many post ups, you know, as we had in the last year or two. But we're obviously still doing certain things and getting to them. But whether it's different ways or different motions or different setups to get to it, so it's not just a you know dribble down, look, 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 and throw it. You know, everybody gets a feel for it. Everybody touches it to eventually get it there. So it just it was different. Does it suit your game? Uh, for sure, you know, uh, this offense is complimentary to me in the sense of just being able to space the floor. It's a lot of driving, it's a lot of cutting, it's a lot of open corner threes, you know, that type of stuff. So it should, it should benefit me, you know, well. Darko has talked about kind of expanding the rotation this year. Obviously, you guys have played a pretty tight rotation the last few years. How beneficial do you think that can be, kind of from the top of the roster at the bottom, just in terms of more opportunity for guys, but also maybe balanced minutes throughout the, the rotation? Yeah, true. It could. You know, obviously everybody's going to play a different amount of minutes, and, you know, coach is going to control who does that, how many minutes, how long they're on the floor, who's on the floor, who's starting, who's not starting. So, you know, that's going to be up to him, but, yeah, for the most part. You, you've said you commun communicated with them pretty effectively uh, early on through camp when you were talking uh, at the media day. Um, has he, have you had many conversations about the fact that you know, Dennis is starting to start the first two exhibition games? And is that something he's communicated to you in terms of what he's looking for from your role, or is it just still what you see right now? No, as of right now, it's going to be what it's going to be. I haven't heard anything about coming off the bench, starting. Obviously, the first two games, I've been coming off the bench, uh, practices. I've been with the second units and everything we're doing. So uh, the writing's on the wall. So just continue to. Go, come in and help, and help to win as much as I can. Think of the, sorry. I was going to say, I mean, even last year at times when you went fluctuating bench starting, you always seemed to respond well, like it didn't really seem to affect your production very much. I mean, if, if it does end up you're part of that second unit on a regular basis, what's your reaction to that? How do you feel about it? Obviously, you know, you work to start in the league and start for a team and help a team as much as you can. But again, I have no control over that. So again, whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. I can only control me coming in, working, being a great teammate, and contribute to winning. That's all I can help with. That's all I can do. There's no time to, you know, complain, nag about what's going on, how my situation is and how what I wanted it. There's none of that. I'm coming in to work and I'm going to do what I need to do to help this team win. The first game in Vancouver, you guys shot five mid-range jumpers. <clears throat> the shot chart from last night, there were two non-threes, not in the paint. So, uh, I mean, obviously you've taken some shots from that range and previously in your career. Do you find yourself sort of altering the shots you're taking within the system, or is it just what's not coming within the system for you? Uh, I would say really just whatever comes with the system. You know, again, obviously it's a lot of threes, a lot of spacing. It's a lot of like point five second basketball in a sense, almost close to, I want to say, kind of close to the Spurs with summertime offense and kind of close to the Warriors in a sense. If there's the stuff we're trying to practice, whether it's just pass, cut, moving, moving without the ball, that type of thing. But no, it shouldn't, it should be good. Gary, last week you guys had a practice that was more defensively focused and the following one is more offensively focused or vice versa, I remember. And now that you guys are two preseason games in, what's the focus in practice and going into Chicago? Our main focus this week in going to Chicago is obviously just us. Obviously, our game last night, we just wanted to make sure that we were, we'll say, as solid as we want to be on both ends, offense and defense. And then, obviously, that wasn't an NBA team. It was still a good team. But now we're going to Chicago, and it should be a good road test for us on the road and preseason to get us acclimated for the first game on the 25th. Is there any difficulty with, I don't know if it's ramping up or having another switch in your head to go from playing a team like Cairns to, again, like an NBA team like Chicago? Uh, no, not really, because, you know, at the end of the day, you're still going against professionals no matter 
what level you on, and you obviously still want to put a certain product out there of yourself. So no matter who you're really playing, you don't really want to try to vary to we're playing Chicago, we're playing a team for Australia. You want to just keep going as hard as you can, no matter what. Last time you guys played Chicago, free throws was an issue, right, in the playoff playing game. Mm -hmm. Has that been a bigger focus for this team in the preseason so far? Uh, I wouldn't say we really harp too much on free throws, but really just harping, paying attention to detail. You know, obviously, and also staying locked in all the way throughout practice, all the way to the end. You know, obviously, it can get long, it can get hectic, you can get tired, but, you know, still having that mental aspect and staying locked in, I would say that's the most we've talked about as a group, as a core, as is a it, team. Is it possible to practice high leverage free throws in practice? When you say high leverage, is that just a lot of attempts? Or no, you... like, like, you know, play in game, games on the line. Like, how, do uh, you, yeah. how do you practice important free throws in the OVO? You can practice many ways. You can try to hit 10 in a row, hit five in a row, two in a row. If you miss sprints, if you, you know, motivation, something, you know, something to make you make it. You know, obviously you want to make all your free throws, but you know, it's about just paying attention to detail and reps at the end of the day, to be honest. That's all it's really on, you know, staying focused. You've spoken about using a, a deep rotation this year, 10 guys. I, ideally, would you say start the second quarter with five bench guys on the floor, or are you somebody that sort of believes that you've got to stagger the starters and always have just one guy out there? I, I think it's uh, always good to have one of the, on the starters with a bit of second unit. I, I trust our second unit guys for sure. But I think just providing a little bit extra room in that second unit there is something that we're going to look at. When you look at somebody like Malachi, let's say, he's been inconsistent over the last few years, but his role has also been inconsistent. It's sort of a chicken and the egg thing, right? So are you somebody that kind of believes that a player needs to earn his role or that a player needs to play in order to develop and, and prove that they it's, it's both. Uh, first of all, it, it starts like with me believing in players and working with those guys to, to, to get better and to understand and accept their role. Uh, Malakai is somebody who uh, I have a very high confidence in. I think he's a player that, that uh, he's not even close to maxing out. I think there is uh, so much room for, for the growth in his game. On the ball and off the ball, I think he's really good off ball, coming uh, as a secondary guy, coming off of wide pin downs or second side pick and rolls. Uh, I think he's the, somebody who can break down defense uh, pretty well and then touch the paint. And we're just going to continue working on, on those skills with him, like finishing, finding open man. Like last night, he, he was wide open for a layup and uh, he tried to make extra pass, just, just score. When nobody's stopping you and you beat defense, uh, be aggressive to score. Coach, you talk about belief in players, and that has to be present when it comes to the level of ball movement that you're expecting. How do you implement that, especially when there's so much new around this roster? Um, it's uh, very important everything, uh, every day that we, we, we are around each other. It's uh, small side conversations, it's watching film with, uh, with our guys, it's uh, really making sure that they understand how I feel about them and their game. And for me, it's always like I'm not looking just the player where he's at right now but actually where he needs to be and how we can help that player to to improve so it's really a belief that starts uh with us with the coaching staff that, that then triggers down to everybody on the roster when you look at the contract situations on this roster it seems like the roster is pretty set for the regular season does it feel like there are spots that could be changing or do, do you feel the contracts suggest how things are going uh i'm not looking at uh, who's under contract or not time I'm, I'm getting ready for the practice getting ready for the film uh we, we have people who are paid to do that job what have you seen from uh, gary trent jr so far we just spoke to him Oh, Gary, uh, I'm amazed with, with, with Gary. First of all, his uh, working habits is second to none. Uh, every single day he brings high level of energy, uh, high level of focus. Uh, with him, we're trying also like his defense uh, to, to get it to another, another level. Obviously, he's really good with the deflections and steals. But now how we, we make that uh, even more disciplined, but to, to keep he's still like able to, to get steals and deflections. And then offensively, as you could see last night, he is uh, doing a really good job of moving the ball. He has such a great feel to space on the floor to find the open shots. I have such a, such a huge belief for him. What's, what's involved in teaching defensive discipline to a guy like Gary? 
It's uh, it's all all of our uh, the, uh, defensive principles. When we need to go over on screens, to go over on screens. Uh, when we need to go under, how to go under. It, I always believe that, that I, as a coach, I always have to answer three questions to players: What are we doing? Why we're doing it? And how are we gonna do it? And uh, for in order to provide all of those answers, uh, it's not just like uh, a clinic one day and everybody picks it up. It's it's going to take some time to develop those habits. So we have to keep hammering that home to him, like know those three things or whatever number thing. For sure, for sure, for sure. It's it's going to be uh, whole year. I told guys this morning in video session, I'm going to be very boring uh, with uh, with hammering uh, same things over and over and over until we perfect it. Gary's come off the bench the, the first couple of preseason games. Is that a role? Like, do, you, do you see him kind of taking on that leadership role with that second group with some of those bench lineups? I uh, I see Larry taking a leadership role every time when he touches the the the, the, the floor. So uh, my expectations are for him starting not starting are uh, very high on both ends of the floor, and we're gonna keep that whole year. He's one of the guys who sort of had the green light to go one on one a bit more last over the last few years, and we saw a lot of his step backs. There really hasn't been much of that in the preseason. Maybe one of them in, in the first game. How impressed have you been with his sort of adapting so quickly? To like as, as I said, he's a very high IQ player. Like he understands the spacing on the floor. He understands the flow that we want to play. Every day that he's coming over here in the gym and he's raising the level of all, all, all the guys, the way he's just working, he, his uh, pace on the court. And uh, it's, it's very, for me, very impressive the way he's uh, accepting everything that we're teaching. And I think that he also sees the value of that for the team, but also for himself being a more efficient player. As a coach, how do you, one of the challenging things is kind of getting people to buy into a role. Uh, and Gary, a guy like kids like Gary, I think he started like 85% of his games here in Toronto. So, if you were to somebody who was going to be in your second unit, how would, what would be your strategy? Like, how do you approach communicating that message? I mean, um, you can uh, look at a Hall of Famers uh, that some of those guys were coming off the bench and being amazing players at uh, different parts of uh, of, the, of the season. Like, you just got to be ready to go out there and be pro. And uh, everything I've seen so far from Gary is he's that guy. He's a pro. The last time this but, I mean, team. Do you, I'm sorry, oh, but do you, do you make an effort to? Explain this is why you know, your role has changed to what you had before, or do you just let them figure it out? No, no, no. We, we were going to talk about everything. Once we know how the rotation is going to look like, I'm going to sit down and talk to every player and explain what are my expectations, what is my vision, and how we're going to go from there. The last time this team played Chicago in the play in tournament, free throws was an issue for the group. Is that something that's been a bigger part of the focus so far? And, and how do you practice? important, crucial playoff atmosphere of free throws at OVO. Right. Um, obviously, whatever you do in this setup is, is going to be really hard to mimic uh, playoff atmosphere. And when the game is on the line and you're playing in front of 20,000 uh, people, you know, maybe I could uh, start cussing guys out in Serbian so they can get a little bit of, of, of heat there. I'm just joking, of course. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, they're putting a lot of work in, and our guys, they, they, they know that uh, those are very important for us, and uh, it's, it's just muscle memory. you got to do it in this setup, you got to do it in the game, and to understand that it's not the end of the overall. Like, you go to the free throw line, you got to have confidence in this shot, make it or miss it. You cannot change that. Focus on the next one. Like, you cannot live in the past. Coach, uh, you're halfway through the preseason basically now, two things down, two more to go. You know, you talked about how they, the guys were learning a lot, like offense, defense. What are you guys working on now? Is it still learning or is it kind of fixing errors that you're seeing on the court in the first two games? It's it's uh, both. We're still uh, still in the process of cleaning up some some things uh, on both ends of the floor, but also we added more uh, the defensive schemes today. We added uh, some offensive uh, plays today. We're continuing to, to build up. I gotta be really careful how much we're putting in, so the guys actually can master that before we make the next step. Do you have any idea if Precious is gonna play tomorrow? Uh, Precious for tomorrow game, uh, I believe that he's gonna be questionable. Uh, but he participated today in a five and five in all contact. He looked good, so we're, we're gonna talk to him today after this and see see how he feels. And Otto is 
Is there any possibility he'd be ready for regular season? Or just... he, is, he is closer every single day. So, uh, again, like with him, it's a little bit different because he was out for a full year. So we want to be smart and just like when he feels, when everybody feels that he's ready, we're going to send him over there. That moment is approaching. Not sure we've spoken to you since camp started. How was the summer? Uh, it was good. Uh, spent some time back home with some family. Um, so overall, it was pretty good. Do you do anything different in terms of like training or preparation? Um, got in the weight room a little bit more. Um, but other than that, pretty, pretty similar. Just getting in the gym, getting in the weight room. Um, playing five on five back at home um, with guys around the area. So it was pretty good. I mean, pretty obvious you got in the weight room. What was the focus there and what was the routine? How did that, why did you think it could help? Uh, shit, going against these dudes in practice every day for one, I think we got a pretty strong team like from top to bottom. Um, but also in games, just feeling like that little extra couple pounds might help me. Um, so that was kind of a focus during off season. How much did you put on? Um, probably like five to seven pounds of, of good weight. It's a lot for, it's kind of like, it's not like you're pretty lean, right? Yeah, so for like, sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And have you, have you noticed it? Like, I mean, I've seen you kind of bounce around doing some dunking, which that kind of stuff, do you just feel like you have more lift or more? Yeah, I, I, would, I would definitely say so. Um, definitely not jumping out the gym, never will be, but um, feeling a little bit stronger on defense, taking bumps a little better um, and, and a little more explosive, so it feels good. Did you, um, you know, did you look at the change in coaching staff as, as an opportunity for you? Uh, of course, I think it's just like a reset, you know what I mean? Um, when he first got the job, didn't know nothing about him, but just a, a reset for everybody. Um, and then once I got to know him, he's really detail oriented, very organized, and just someone that um, kind of can get on the same page with. So I think it's been good. Darko's talked about using a, a deeper rotation, 10 guys. Is that something that's like music to your ears a little bit, just in terms of there being more opportunity out there to get on the floor? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's, it's definitely going to be fun. I mean, he's, he's told that to us too, 10 deep, and he kind of lets us know. Um, who, it, who, it, who it's going to be or who it may be. So it's, that's definitely something to look forward to. How, how tough has it been over the last few years to, to get into any kind of like groove or rhythm, not really knowing each night how much you're going to be out there, if you're going to be out there, and, and how, how much do you think, how much of a difference it can make to have that consistent role? Um, I mean, it was what it was in the past years. I don't really want to dwell on that at all. It's, it's a new year, so new everything kind of we feel got a little different spirit going so um, not really thinking about those past years and just kind of looking forward to moving on. Makes sense. I mean there's been examples you know of, of guys, point guards at kind of a tough position there's only one mm -hmm. usually and so it's a lot, there are examples of guys who've kind of taken to year three, year four, year five sometimes even to kind of get minutes, get an opportunity and then blossom. I mean do you kind of take some encouragement from, from that? And, I still see a long horizon here. Uh, of course, I remember um, even Kalo telling me that a little bit about him in Houston and, and him coming here. It took him a couple years to kind of get his feet together and feel comfortable and actually start playing how he knew he could play. So um, definitely feeling confident about the year. I know it's a big year. Definitely not putting pressure on myself, but just just looking forward for it. You talk about that new spirit. What, how, how do you describe that? Um, I just think it's a change, so it's always going to be different, you know what I mean? Um, we had good spirit last year as well, but this year it's just a, it's just a new thing, so everybody's kind of a little more energy, and it's just, it's just something different, so I think it's always going to feel that way. Coach kind of talked about how he feels that you're just pretty much scratching the surface of what you can play to your abilities. What do you feel is that next level to unlock? Um, yeah, I would agree with him. I just think um, just continuing to, to grow, get more comfortable out there, preseason getting in shape as well. You know, you can't really emulate game shape. Um, but just continuing to be aggressive, make the right plays, and just little by little, I think it'll, it'll get better. You mentioned how much, uh, how Darko sort of keeps you in the loop, lets you know if you might be in that group. I think Gary said on media day that it's like the most he's talked to a coach mm -hmm. off the court. Have you ever had somebody, like a coach, that communicates as much as the, as Darko? Um, in the past, yes. Um, but at this level, obviously, I've only yeah. dealt with two coaches so far. Um, and they're different, not yeah. to say one's better than the other, but um, they're different. And I think guys kind of like when he lets them know what it's going to be, you can kind of mentally prepare for it. So it's a little bit different. Does Fred? it get a little more competitive? Because like you mentioned, he tells you who's in that next five, like beyond the starter. Does it get a little competitive? And does it, like, you know, out here? 
Uh, of course. I mean, guys over there competing right now. Um, I mean, you should be going at it no matter what. Yeah. But I think it definitely adds a little more competitiveness, which is good for the team. You know, we're never out trying to hurt each other. But um, when we're competing in practice, it makes everybody better. So it's, it's good. What's your uh, thoughts on Dennis and having kind of knocked heads with him? I'm pretty sure in the mm-hmm. last couple of weeks. What does he bring? Uh, he brings just a, a new confidence to a new spirit. Um, getting guys together, you know what I mean? Getting a lot of work in. Um, Talking to us, he's he's been trying to talk to us a lot, um, trying to be that take on that leader role, and obviously he's been around the league, he's been in many different situations, so he kind of knows what to look for and tr- how to help the team. So it's been good so far. Fred seemed to talk about taking you under his wing um, when he was here. Has Dennis taken on that role for sort of the point guard room or or on this team? Um, I would say so. I think it's naturally too. You know, what I mean, we're the only really two like. People that play point guard their whole life, per se, you know what I mean? We're both around six foot, smaller guys. Um, so I think it's just something naturally that you lean into each other and kind of grow from each other, get better with each other, and do things like that. Can I take that as a shot at Marquise? <laughs> oh, I didn't even, I wasn't, and Marquise too, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure, him too. <laughs>